something fundamental with any app is to be able to have list views and in those list views be able to press items. So in this video we'll be doing just that, so stay tuned and just a brief message from our sponsor. If you're interested in any or all of these classes, it's definitely worth to check out Skillshare. Get a free month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. Link is in the description. So let's just start by cleaning up the code a bit. So I saw that I had an error here because this is a stated widget, status widget. We need to declare this variable final. And let's move the home widget to another file. So in the lib, we can create a new Dart file. We can call it home. We can paste this and we can import the material package. There we go. Go back to main. We can see that we haven't imported the, the package here or the library. So alt enter import the home. So let's just change this a bit. So we won't be do using the await and wait for a response from the navigation. So let's just remove that. And let's format this. There we go. So if we check that we have, yeah, it's working. So let's first go to home and we will not be using a, a button in the middle. So let's remove the center altogether in the body. And here we can have a welcome message. So welcome username. And there we go. So in this, uh, this body in home, we will create a list view builder. So if you type list view builder, it requires a context. So let's give it the context. And what it also needs is a, uh, a index for each item that will uh, be displaying in this. Let's open that up, format this. So something else that's needed is a, a item count. So the item count will be uh, the amount of items from your list. So let's just type zero for now. And we will create a list here. So let's make a list of a string. Uh, and let's call it di database items for now. And now in item count, we can easily do div items uh, dot len. So as you know that we just declare or initialize the list, but we didn't initialize it with any items. So the item count will now be zero. So this won't display anything. Uh, and we can create a function. So get items. So this is, will be just be an example, uh, but uh, it will be the same way if you have a database. So let's call future and import that. So future have a function called delay and this is just for example, the delay will happen if you, if you call your get, get function. And let's just await that. So now let's just copy my, my list. So this example, like, because this will be the example of uh, items we'll get from the database. And then we can add those items to, to this list. So what you need to know, know now is that because this is a stateful widget, we need to make this item count be updated in runtime. So we need to do the set state. And now we can do our db items dot add all. And we add the fetched list like this. So this won't actually do anything right now because we, first of all, we aren't calling get items anywhere and we don't have a, a item builder. It doesn't return any specific layout. So first let's return a layout. So let's return a list tile. 
and we can give that a title. And as always, you can always pr control press to see what the, what parameters it takes. So we will ask you just use a title for now. So the title will be uh, it will be the DB items, and it will be the wait uh, like this. It will be the the index that uh, the item builder returns. So this will be the list tile that each item has and you should return the index of that. So now let's just call our get items. So we have another method called initiate state. So this will happen before the first build happens. So in here we can call our get items. And let's just check if that works. So let's type my name and just a random password. We sign in and we can see that we have a welcome and my name and we can see all items. Um, but let's add another thing because when we logged in, we saw that it was blank and then the items appeared. So let's use a ternary operator for this. So we can check if the DB items, if it's not equal to zero, so if it has items in it, uh, oh, dot len. So if it does, so so if it does have items in it, we will return the list view builder with the the layout like this. And if it doesn't have any items in it, we can return a center widget with the child of a circular progress. What was meant there? The circular's progress indicator. So let's reload that. Go back. Type my name again. We sign in, and we can see we have a loading bar, and each item is here. So now let's add a on press on each item. So let's create a function called item press, and this will take a because our items are strings, so it will take a string item. And we will do a simple print on the item. So list tile has a handy on press or on tap, I mean. And we can pass in the on press. So here we can add the DB items and as same before we take the index. So right now this won't work because we have to have a anonymous function because we have a parameter. So let's see if that works. We type my name, some password. You can see we have a loading bar, the items, and if I press the first item, it printed the first item and the fourth, fifth. So everything seems to be working and uh, we have our list view. So what we can also do is we can convert, instead of a list view, we can also have grid views. So that will be the same example. So instead of a list view, we can add a grid view. And a grid view takes a grid delegate, which will be a sliver, I think. Yeah, sliver fix cross axis count. And that will be the count of items that will be displayed on the horizontal axis. So if we save that, we can see that we have a grid instead. So maybe instead of a list tile, will you, you will use a center or something to to center those items instead. Um, but that is all for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Um, I think this will be the last episode of this series. If you find anything that should be brought up in this series, I will add another episode. But for now it's done, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like the series, please like it and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.